I do these things because I feel it contributes to my, my artistic statement. Um, it adds another label, level of uh, my own personal thought of my beliefs to the artwork. So not only is the concept mine, but the way I've made the canvas, uh, the irregularities in the canvas, the irregularities in the paint, makes it um, makes it human. It, uh, it it becomes a part of my own philosophical beliefs. Um, and I think I think when you look at it, maybe you don't understand why it's different, but it has its own its own feel uh, that you cannot get if you buy a store store bought canvas or a store bought paint, things like that. These are all my materials. This is everything I need to make all my paints. I have organic flaxseed oil. So this is straight out of straight from the farm, cold press, and I open this, I let it oxidize, and then I slowly refine it until it's usable linseed oil that I use to grind my paints with. Indian yellow is made um, by these farmers feed their cows mango leaves, and then they collect the urine of the cow, and they dry it, and you get this high chroma yellow. I'm, I'm really involved in the pigment. I like to know the characteristics of each pigment. Each pigment has its own personality, the way it takes oil, the way you apply it onto the canvas, the um, how it affects your body. Every one of them's different. Um, two of my favorite pigments are the, uh, the ochres, which I make myself. So this is yellow ochre and red ochre. They're both iron oxides. And these pigments have been historically used for over 30,000 years. So these are very ancient pigments. Um, they're healthy, they're stable. I love the um, finished yellow ochre. I also think it's a different painting experience where when you're involved in every part of the painting, where uh, you go out, you dig your pigments, you refine it yourself, you hand make your oil, you know, you know every, everything thoroughly. You know, your hand has touched every part of the process. Uh, stand oil, I can't make this. Um, it's a cooked linseed oil. And you put this on at the end of the painting, um, it takes out all the brush strokes, makes a nice atmosphere, and also seals the painting. I use a lot of, I use a lot of rabbit skin glue to uh, prepare my canvases. This is a nice fine linen that you could use for a portrait, something where you're doing really fine detail. Here's a medium, you see there's just a bit more texture. Uh, this would be nice for a larger painting, a figure painting. If you're doing a very large painting, this is some really heavy linen. So you see the weaves thicker. And this is very strong. What you need to do is seal this so that um, the paint doesn't get absorbed into it. It protects the, uh, the fabric of the canvas, makes it watertight. Now, this is a rabbit skin. And ready to use. My canvas that I prepared, you can see the uh, raw linen on the back. It's really important to have nice stretcher bars because your painting can twist as you stretch it. Um, over time it can warp. So having a sturdy frame ensures that you're gonna have a quality, a quality made canvas. I tacked this on. This is a uh, They've been using tacks since the Renaissance and before. So um, it's easier than the staples. It's easier to remove it. I'll glue it several times until I can't see any holes in the glue. 
So there won't be any light coming directly through the canvas. So the canvas will be sealed. And then I put on my primer. So these, these stems will just agitate the oil at different degrees. Um, so you have different sizes of it to make sure that you thoroughly break down the oil. And I'm gonna smash it up and break it down and uh, clean it. It'll remove all, all the plant matter that I don't want. <laughs> Got a spider. Okay. See that it's thoroughly mixed. Um, the stones have broken up the oil pretty well. Really pretty color. Pour it in the center. I use a lot of brushes instead. I'll have brushes for each color and for each thing I want to paint. These are um, synthetic Mongo's hair brushes that I use for painting real smooth transitions between forms. These are hog bristle brushes that I use to lay down um, more, more clean cut shapes. These kind of merge everything together. These lay down real uh, exact shapes. And I have some smaller brushes working on an effect of light. So there's a strong light coming down. So I'm going to work on the transition in the forehead. But once you get all that place, you got your light effect, then you spend probably another week just refining everything and really taking it to that, that next level where it looks like there's a real person sitting in a chair in space. You know, it's absolutely convincing.